did you get started in gaming? Because it seems like this is a male dominant. <laughs> it is. You know, it was kind of random. So, you know, first and foremost, um, I'm a writer. Uh -huh. So um, I was writing for my college newspaper, and um, a job opened up. Sierra Online actually had offices right down the street from where I lived. I'm like, hmm, no commute, cool, you know. And I had played. I wasn't a huge, huge gamer. I mean, my dad got us Pong when it first came out. Right. So I played. I really actually kicked ass at um, Super Breakout. But, um, you know, and then we got the Atari 2600, and my brother sort of took it over, but I would play Space Invaders. Pitfall was my game. Okay, I like okay. Pitfall. And then um, PC games, my brother had King's Quest 2, and I really was like, oh, man, King's Quest 2 is awesome. You know, and you would type it in, and I'd try to be funny, like, you know, Graham is on the beach, and I'd say, get tan. And it would say, <laughs> King Graham does not have time to sunbathe. You need to go on with your quest. I'm like, oh, they thought of that. That's so funny. So um, that was pretty much my, my gaming experience until this writing job opened. Of course, you know, when you want to be a writer, you will take any piece right. of crap writing job that you can find because it's like they're going to pay me to write words and do what I love, rock on. And it was right down the street. So I um, applied for the job and I was writing um, these really kind of um, sarcastic editorials for my college newspaper. And um, the guy who edited um, Interaction Magazine, John Williams, is uh, Ken Williams' brother at Sierra. Um, liked, you know, the edgy, sarcastic kind of style, so he hired me to be um, an assistant editor on that magazine, and um, it was part-time at first, and then, um, so, you know, I would, like, answer fan mail and do expense reports and really kind of secretarial stuff and write little things, and then I got my first big cover story, and then my job sort of turned full-time, so I dropped out of college, which people shouldn't do, stay in school, but, um, yeah, so I got there, I was at Sierra for seven years, I worked on the newspaper there, or not the newspaper, sorry, the Interaction Magazine, which was the quarterly, but had a circulation of about a million. It was translated into French and German, and so that was really cool for me, starting out. And um, then I moved into uh, copywriting, so I wrote packaging and advertising. Um, you know, I, I used to write, like, the Half-Life packaging and stuff, and Valve cool. loved it until they found out I was a girl, and then nothing <laughs> I wrote was right, and I was just like, you guys are jerks. But, um, love you guys. <laughs> Um, and then they, uh, Sierra decided to move the creative services department, that's who did all the packaging and advertising, down to L.A. And I'm not down with L.A., right. so I decided to stay here. Okay. And I got a job at Xbox, right, and I was first writing um, documentation, like some manuals. So the first Xbox Live manual, that little skinny thing that came with your starter disc, I wrote it. No way. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, Xbox Live started, and um, we had our... I just started writing and I came up with this sort of fictional reporter, Trixie, because it's got a big X in it for Xbox. And that was about five years ago. So, um, and gradually I went from just, you know, interviewing gamers in the Gamer Spotlight to um, being the community editor and starting community programs like Xbox Ambassadors and um, Xbox Gamer Tricks. Right, okay. I wanted to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, now, before I get into Gamer Chicks, did you choose Xbox because it's in Seattle, or were you here um, and like, I mean, now you work for Xbox, so you kind of have to say the cool yeah, right no, answer, honestly, but... Yeah, when I worked at Sierra, I was very, very threatened by the consoles. You know, in place, I mean, Xbox wasn't even out yet, right. but there was PlayStation, and you know, we would, I was very like, ugh, consoles suck, it's all about PC gaming, because I, whatever company I work for, you know, it's like, they're my guys, yeah. I'm loyal. And then um, a couple of my friends went to work on Xbox, and at first I was like, that's the dumbest name I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, seriously, it was like the code name, and then right. they just, I mean, I think it's an awesome name, really, but you know, when you first hear you're like, Xbox, right. what the hell is that? But, um, now a couple of my friends went there, and they loved it, and you know, the opportunity came up, and I didn't want to move to LA, and honestly, I was a little bit sketchy, you know, because I am kind of opinionated, and not the most corporate, professional type of person, and I thought, ooh, Microsoft, I mean, are they going to, you know, I'm not going to last very long, I'm going to have to, like, dial it way down, but Xbox is not corporate, corporate, Xbox has let me get away with all kinds of stuff, and they're very, they have sort of a startup mentality, you know, right. and it's just like the splinter group, we have a whole different campus, I mean, you know, I, I love Microsoft, I, <laughs> I really respect what they do to give back to the community and stuff, but I really... I don't know if I could work in any department besides Xbox because it is, everybody's young, everybody's a gamer, everybody is kind of like a, you know, got a right. kind of rebellious attitude a little bit, so I appreciate it.
appreciate that. So let's wrap about Gamer Chicks. Okay. Tell us, for people that have no clue what it is, like okay. what is Gamer Chicks? Because I know you started this bad thing. I did. Me and uh, my two co-founders, PMS Kitty and Dirty Diva, right. um, we just saw that girls were having a hard time online, just getting trash talked, getting, um, you know, teen killed or hit on, you know, or a combination of all three. And it was intimidating. And so they weren't even trying to get online. And, and, and missing out on the online environment. They weren't trying new games. They weren't, you know, they were just missing out on a whole facet of, of gaming. And um, so we wanted to create a safe place for women to, even if they were just starting out, to, to, I would say like, you know, if you're a grandma who's playing Mahjong tiles on the MSN zone, you're a gamer. You don't have to be like a smelly dude who plays, you know, FPS for 20 hours straight to be a gamer. If you play games, you're a gamer. And you know, come and, come and hang with us and meet some other women who like to game. And I've had so many women that say like, oh my gosh, all the other moms from PTA think I'm nuts because I like games. But they find, you know, thousands of women just like them. I have, I have no budget, I have no advertising, I have no marketing. It's been a completely grassroots effort and in a little over a year I have 3,277 members in 29 countries. Where do you sign up for women out there that are checking this out right now? Well, How do I get on board? Well, what first we need to do is check out our website. It's xbox.com slash gamerchicks with an X. And um, and that'll show you all the things. The, all you have to do is have two X chromosomes and like to game. But we do have <laughs> the manifesta, which is our code of conduct, which is you cannot ever talk trash about another woman, ever. And that means anywhere in your life. Wow. You can't even talk trash about Paris Hilton, and I almost had to kick myself out <laughs> a couple times. Or even or Lindsay Lohan, or Brittany. You can't, you know, because I think that that brings women right. down. In general. Yeah, and if sure. we could stop trashing on each other and focus on, you know, the important stuff, we would take over the world. So we will take over the world someday. Wow. Yeah. I hear that. So, um, yeah, so the, there's a code of conduct, definitely, and that's, there's no drama. There's no competition. It's not about how you look at all. You know, um, you don't have to have a certain body type or hairdo or whatever to be a gamer chick. They are all super hotties to me if they like to game. So, yeah. So working for Xbox, coolest thing you've seen? Coolest thing yeah, I've seen. Because you've been everywhere. Lately, I obviously. just got back from Tokyo Game right. Show, and I have to say, Ninja Gaiden 2 okay. is the oh. bloodiest game I have ever seen in <laughs> my Even life. Even over Gears of War. Yeah, it's wow. so bloody. <coughs> Sorry. I actually like went like a couple times. Because he like cuts up people. And then he goes like this, flick, and all the blood comes off his sword. And it's it's pretty sick, but um So now that Halo 3 is out and about, is that the next big thing that people have to look forward to from Xbox? So what's the next um, big you know, thing? On I'm Xbox? really looking forward to, especially gamer chicks or people who are not, you know, the hardcore stinky gamers. We've got some really fun stuff coming out, like Viva Pinata Party Animals. It's just like mini games, and it's really fun. There's this one where you you chug root beer, and then you burp, and you like race these sailboats with the power of your belt. And it's really fun. Amazing. That's cool. And then seen it, you know, if you're a movie freak right. like I am, you can um, rock it. Seen it's got a big button, and you feel like you're on. Um, you know, family feud with big buzz in. And that's going to be Xbox Live compatible? That or? one is not oh, live compatible, darn. which kind of sucks, I know. Yeah. I, it's kind of a... It's hard to get like go. 10 friends in the room yeah. to play that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm looking forward to. And Beautiful Category. That's coming out the 16th, so... Very cool. I'm stoked about that. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much. Sure. I have to play that. Yeah.